have a new Sigilant SDS-1102 CML oscilloscope and we're going to show you how to set it up to read your modulation envelope. Out of the package we have our new oscilloscope. It comes with the USB cable and power cable, a quick start guide and your probes. So here we have the Sigilant SDS-1102 CML. And we're going to test it with the Kenwood TS-990 and the AC Mod C1 console. First thing we're going to do is install our BNC jumper to our RF sample output of the AC Mod C1 to any of the two inputs of the oscilloscope. Okay, the first thing we'll do is power it up. The power switch is right up here. And wait. We'll wait for it to boot up. There we go. So that's the default as it comes out of the box. And now we're going to set it up to read our AM modulation envelope. Next thing we do, we turn on our radio. And we're already set up for AM on the radio. We're on AM mode. Next thing we do is we turn on the AC mod. We enable the AC mod in the rear by flipping the switch towards the connector, and it is, okay. And we'll set up Pro Tools now, so we could generate the tone. Now that we've loaded Pro Tools, next thing is we're gonna transmit and set the deck key. Determine the level of carrier that you need and set it on the power meter. So we'll go ahead and transmit. First of all, our carrier end power is at max here. And next, we need to bring all the AC mod controls counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. And then we're going to transmit. Here, we're on TX mode. We're going to look at the meter. And we're going to raise up the carrier. So we get... Let's do a... A 5 watt carrier. 5 watt is one division, we're on a 250 watt slug, so that right there. That right there is 5 watts, one division on the meter, right there. Okay, so now we come to our oscilloscope here. And we already have a signal going on. We have a modulation envelope, but it's not adjusted correctly. We need to bring it down to the reference of two divisions. And for that, we use our vertical adjustment. We're gonna bring our signal to cover two divisions or two squares. So as you can see, when we rotate our adjustment, it jumps and it, we don't get it quite right. So for that, you press it and now you got a fine adjustment and you can increase that until you cover your two divisions right around there. But you can see it's a little high on the top so we could bring it down with our position, with our vertical position right here. As you can see, we can move it down, we can move it up or center it right where it needs to be. Okay, we'll stop transmitting for now. And we've set right now our vertical position to two squares or two divisions, and that's our reference for our 5 watt dead key. Next, we're gonna go ahead and key up. We're gonna generate the tone and transmit and adjust the oscilloscope to see our modulation envelope correctly. Okay, we have connected our line in connector to the AC mod C line in input coming from the M box too many. And we're ready to transmit and modulate. So we'll go ahead and transmit. There we have our carrier. And now we'll start the SIGGEN on Pro Tools. Right there. And as you can see, we have some modulation there. And right now what we need to do is raise up our modulation control 
right there. That's our 100% modulation. As you can see, we haven't reached 99% negative modulation. So let's go ahead and increase our modulation on the AC mod until we see we're as close to 99% modulation on the negative side as we can. So now you can increase your asymmetry as I increase it here. That's already 300% modulation. If you want to spread out, you go to your horizontal adjustment and increase it so you can see more details of the audio envelope. For the trigger, we simply press trigger and we assign it to channel one, which is already assigned. And then once you have it where you need it, you adjust your level to sync it. This is your trigger line right there. That thin line right here in the bottom, that line, that's your trigger level. And that's what allows you to sync the modulation envelope so it doesn't move. So you wanna set that so it's not jumping all the time. If you ever wanna use your second channel, you just activate it by pressing that number two. And now you see your other color here. That's your second channel. Now, one thing to always check is once you press any of these buttons, your menu comes out. If your bandwidth limit, I would always have it on. It typically puts you at a 20 megahertz uh, bandwidth limit, so no components above 100 megahertz interfere with your uh, measurements. Um, coupling is another uh, important thing here, the coupling. Coupling, you want to be... While you're, while you're reading your modulation envelope, you want to be in DC. And you'll select there. With this button here, you could turn to do your selection. You want to stay in DC, and then you press this button to confirm. And that's how you set your coupling, your bandwidth, your volts per division, and probe. You can just leave it at one time, that's fine. But that's it, that's the basic uh, operation to take a look at your modulation envelope on the oscilloscope, very simple. Again, your horizontal divisions are here. Again, your horizontal divisions are here. And your vertical gain or adjustment is here. Okay.